Coming up on All About Android, we discuss a new ruling on being compelled to unlock your device with biometrics. Also, Qualcomm's Snapdragon 855 has some benchmarks, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 7, the undeletable Facebook app, and so much more. All About Android is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash All About Android. Welcome to All About Android, episode 403, recorded on Tuesday, January 15th, 2019, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Oh, yeah. It's the three right. of us today. How y'all doing? The dream team is back. The dream team. Playing 2019. Ball. Yeah. I know it's kind of weird. It's kind of re weird reading that and saying 2019 out loud. I'm just not used to it. I've had no problem writing the number and writing dates and things like that because yeah. inevitably you always get the oh I wrote 2018, but I've been fine this year. So. Yeah, all those checks guys, that we're always writing. Yeah, right. yeah, all those <laughs> checks. All the checks. <laughs> Can I tell you? I recently had to pay. I recently I still haven't paid it, but I recently have to pay a bill that like it's a legal bill that and. Um, there's like I was looking for like how to pay online and I like I finally emailed them. They're like, how can I pay you? They're like, you can mail a check. And I'm like, I don't have a checkbook. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. So I got to I got to I got to ACH or wire the money to them. I mean, it is 2019, yeah. but I still have plenty of reasons, it seems like, to, to yeah. write checks like checks I did, still command I did my time. I did find out that I could go to a uh, uh, for my business account is through Chase and I can go to a Chase branch and pay $2 and they will print a page of checks for me. Oh, oh that's nice. That's way yeah, better. That's convenient. $30 every time I want to book a checks. Oh, geez. That's crazy. Just one. Have we figured that out? Isn't there an app for that yet? Yeah. Isn't that you should be able to pay with your phone or something. <laughs> I saw they an article about, I saw an article that the millennials are paying celebrities via Venmo. Oh, Oh, like just like oh, as yeah, tips, yeah, yeah. as tips. Like, they're t like, like I get apparently Michael Che from Saturday Night Live and some other celebrity have been getting tips via Venmo, which I, which is like, I was like, well, oh, really? Okay, can actually, I writers, uh, people who are very uh, popular on social media or have very expansive social media platforms, they'll be like, hi, I just basically gave you a bunch of knowledge about things for free. How about buying me a cup of coffee this weekend? And so people just like send them a dollar at this Venmo name or. PayPal email address, which, um, I mean, and it's, you can, so it's nobody has economy. cash anymore. So it's the new chip jar. I suppose I really have rarely ever used Venmo, the Venmo app. Uh, but I had reason to over the holiday, uh, to pay for a gift. And so it was really the first time that I really loaded it on my phone and, and used it. And I guess I was kind of surprised at how social it seems like it's a it's a it's oh, a yeah. monetary exchange slash banking style app. Yet there's like a whole social network in there. Uh, it just seems like admit, a really strange disconnect to me. But I, I, I guess will, that's the thing. I will admit when I'm bored, I will scroll through my Venmo feed to see what who's paying who for what. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think it's very funny because I don't think I've ever posted publicly anything that I paid for. Well, I, yeah, I, I, use Venmo, I, I use Venmo all the time at, like, at work. Like I'll pick up lunch for one of my coworkers. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll Venmo to you. And he just you know, sends me 10 bucks. It's great. Um, but really nothing more than that. So I huh. used it to pay for everything. My hair, my nails, my face. And then I get to brag about it in a social network. <laughs> Nice. Thanks for doing my nails. Like nail weird. emoji, nail emoji. It's just weird to see, <laughs> yeah, that what everybody's paying, spending their money on. It's, it is a strange thing. It is a weird thing. Oh. So. I, I, I put mine to uh, private, by the way, so no one yeah. saw who so, I was buying. Well, I do. Yeah. It, it is sometimes nice when you like have a trip upcoming with a friend or like a tickets to a thing. Like my friend will buy us tickets and I'll Venmo her back and then I'll like send her a little message like, I'm so excited for our friend date. Here's the money I owe you. <laughs> let's get to the business. Here's let's do it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, let's let's get to our business. Why don't we? Yes. We Venmoed all around the place. It's time for some news. One check that's easy to cash is finding some Android news. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 
Ooh. I'd check that cash. I'd, or rather, I'd I'll, cash, I'll cash that, that check. check. There we go. <laughs> I'd do both. Yeah, both was, sound I pretty great. I was worried great. I was going to say that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Flo, you got the top story. I'm not sure this is really a top story, but hey. Well, to be fair, the, <laughs> the first thing I saw this morning was that apparently uh, this news had gone live, which was that Google Fi is getting not only RCS compatibility, or ra rather that happened yesterday, but also Google is going to increase its availability and its speed uh, across the globe. So... First things first, if you are on a supported Google Fi, Project Fi phone, I'm sorry, I keep calling it Project Fi, Google Fi. Easy to do. You can have access to RCS compatibility. It's supported via the Android Messages app, just as it is for those of us on Verizon. Uh, not that I really noticed a difference just yet. Maybe because everybody I talk to is on iMessages. I don't know. Right. But these RCS features are going to include typing indicators, read receipts, high-res video sharing, and Wi-Fi messaging, which will be great if you like to keep in touch while you're in the air. Uh, it's going to be automatically enabled for Fi users, and it's available on the Pixel phones, the Moto G6, the LG V35, the LG G7, and the Android One Moto X. Google also announced it's going to have faster 4G LTE coverage in 33 countries. And I'm happy to report one of those countries is Romania. Oh, thankfully. Oh, whew. just in time for my trip to Romania to wow. visit your family. Yes, <laughs> they would gladly accept you and feed you. So, <laughs> well, then sign me up. Uh, I, I, I've checked my messages app. It, it doesn't appear to be activated for me. Are Yet, you on Fi now, Jason? Did I am. you leave Mobile? Yeah, yeah, no, I've been on I've been on Google Fi for a while now. Probably like if I had to guess, like nine months ish. Somewhere what? Right yeah. I, I can't do year? it. I'm, I'm I'm as yeah. I'm I'm as scared <laughs> to move to Google Fi as I am to go to like J Japan and China because I don't know the language. Like it it is if to me like for some reason there's a mental hurdle over Google Fi and like the way it works and 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 doing anything with my number because I've had my phone number since the 90s yeah right like Same. I just I'm just I'm desperately afraid of screwing it all up and I just don't have the time to figure it out. It's so really my not confession. that hard. It's not yeah. that hard. Is it really? No, I just switched over and my my phone number that I've had for many many years as well. Maybe not as long as you've had yours, but long enough. Yeah. It it came over just fine. The monthly price it fluctuates the way Fi is is meant to, but it's always somewhere around like thirty five or forty dollars. So, oh, that's I mean wow. I'm paying a, I'm paying like one hundred and ten I think for my wow. uh, oh holy cow my, well I have but I have unlimited everything including international and I just yeah. don't want to lose that. Not that I have any plans to go international at any time, but like it's like the idea that I have unlimited data. I have unlimited you know like when yeah. I'm in England or in Europe or anything like that. So I'm like this is fine. I'll keep it. But I mean, maybe we, I should change it. Well, no, because um, I mean, Fi does does kind of cap out at a certain uh, amount of gigs that you use. You don't get charged per gig anymore. And I think it's like once you get up to like seventy dollars, I could be wrong on that. But once you get up to seventy dollars, then all of your your overage from there, I think, is covered. Um, I never touch that because I'm always in Wi-Fi places. So. Um, you know, I'm I actually use, paying more on Google Fi than I was on the T-Mobile plan that that I used, and even on that one, it was not unlimited. It was five gigs of data. Uh, um, or no, it was un, it was unlimited data, uh, but ca but uh, throttled at five gigs. So basically, let, just five gigs. I don't be throttled. Let's let's play this game. Everyone, open up your phone. Uh huh. All right, and go to settings. Okay. And then search in settings for data usage. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, and then pull up your data usage and let's see how much data you've used in the first 15 days of the of the month. Oh. Uh, and good. we'll see who uses more data. Um, let's see here. First 50. So I don't know how to set it first 15 days of the month. Oh, well, I mean, uh, I, it says January. We've only, we're only 15 days into January. Yeah, but mine goes December 24th to January 23rd. That's probably because uh, that's my billing cycle. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I've got, you see, under my data usage, I've got two tabs. One that says T Mobile, one that says Wi Fi. And under T Mobile, it says data used January 1st to the 31st. So, data oh well. App data. I wanted to play that game. No, actually, let's see here. App data usage. Maybe Did you tap a on way. cellular data usage? Let's see here. Cellular data usage. 
No, that's Wi-Fi. That's mobile. So yeah, I guess it would be. You can show it if you if you want, Victor. Um, so app data use. So this is my screen. Mobile would be your cellular, right? App data usage, I guess, could be it. But up here, as you can see, usage, total usage, mobile data, de December twenty fourth to January twenty third. That's five gigs. That's actually could high for me. You've used five gig already. Jeez, wow. All well, right. yeah, in, a, in basically, um, yeah. well, I haven't hit the month yet. So, yeah, this has yeah. been a heavy month. Uh, yeah, we've done a lot of uh, road trips and streaming a lot of music and stuff. All right, you ready for this? Oh, no. Yes. From January 1st to January 15th, so 15 days, mobile data, I've used 1.03 gig, so on T-Mobile. Okay. Wi-Fi, I've used 18.5 gig. <laughs> Well, thankfully, all that was on Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi data usage is 14.27 uh, okay. for the same right. uh, yeah. period. So what about so, you, Flo, now that we're sharing all of our data? I, mind you, I did swap out SIMs at the end of, at the beginning of January. And data usage from December 18th to now is 770 megabytes. Not bad. Um, that just oh, includes the Spotify wow. streaming. And Wi-Fi usage is nearly 40 gigs in that same oh time my. period. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. So I do, well, because I downloaded Video? Google Play movies for the airplane. Oh, I, oh that's why. Yeah. yeah. I downloaded yeah. photos for that ridiculous 10-year challenge that, by the way, I'm doing privately, not publicly. <laughs> I just saw that today. I'm I'm so behind on all of these memes. And I was like, do I now? Uh, are you good. are you really behind? No, I only yeah, I am, I did it privately. I sent it to, you know, the friends. I was like, hey, look at us ten years ago. Whoa, we're babies. <laughs> it is kind of interesting <laughs> to see how much how much it, change happens it, in ten it years. It was funny because my, my my wife is like, Oh, people are posting their first profile pic and their profile pic today. She's like, What's yours? And I went and looked and I was like, Oh, my profile pic from two thousand seven is the same is the photo same. I'm using in 2019. So. Of course it is. You never change your stuff. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Ron has an age in a day. It's true. I have it. It's, it's true. Looking at you now, I feel like I just met you mm -hmm. however many years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ron, you've got right. the next story. <laughs> All right. So one of my favorite kind of urban legends is if you ever meet an undercover cop, you say, if you're a cop, you have to tell me. Right. right. Well, so now yeah. we can add to that that cops can't make you uh, scan your, your face or your finger to open up your phone. Uh, might not be an urban legend, though, because a California judge ruled that unlocking a phone with a fingerprint or face or iris scan is the same as using a password, which means that it's protected by the Fifth Amendment. And this sets a precedent uh, that uh, means that users can't be compelled to unlock their phone with their fingerprint or scan. Uh, you know, prior to this, only passcodes were protected as they were seen as testimonial, i.e. self-incriminating. And now face or iris or fingerprint unlock is protected in the same way. Uh, and the judge in the case admits that technology is outpacing law and that biometrics should be uh, subject to the same standards as passcodes. So this happened in California. It doesn't mean that it's right. illegal or legal or whatever. If you get stopped and a cop wants you to unlock your phone, you might want to comply or at least talk or just uh, if you've got nothing to hide, then what are you hiding? But still, um, if you your case was to get to court, this case could be used as precedent to say that you're, you weren't you shouldn't have been able to. But um, and it just shows that. Technology is outpacing law, and we're getting into a weird Blade Runner kind of world uh, where the legal stuff doesn't know what to do with what you can do with these phones. So, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah we, we've heard this. I feel like we talked about this on the show two or three years ago when, well, how, how long have fingerprints been a kind of a big thing on phones? Probably about four years, right? Four, I'd say about years. four years, yeah. And yeah. it was always like, yeah, well, this is really cool. It's really convenient. But just be, you know, be aware that this isn't necessarily the safest way to go if you really want to protect your phone. Uh, this, you know, this gives whoever really wants to get into your phone an easier way to do it uh, if they can compel you to do it or whatever the case may be. I don't know that this this uh, ruling necessarily means it will no longer happen. Like you said, Ron, uh, it just kind of lays out a precedent to follow. And I guess we'll see as we go forward uh, if that if that precedent is um, is followed yep. or strayed from. Who knows? But up to this point, it's been pretty like cut and dry, like you use your fingerprint, you use your iris scan or whatever. That's a thing that's, that's on you. That's not necessarily something that you have, you know, that you know. And so you could not be compelled to testify against yourself. Therefore you could not say your, you could choose to not say your password and that way you wouldn't be, uh, be testifying against yourself, but they saw the biometrics as different. And now just apparently throw the they car, don't. Just, just throw the phone out the car. 
Just throw it while <laughs> you're works. driving. Just <laughs> what, what phone, officer? What are you talking about? Those aren't my fingerprints on that phone you found no, three blocks from the scene. Somebody took my hands and put them on there. <laughs> That'll totally work, Flo. You're right. <laughs> Totally work. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, do an email. We got an email from G. Shannon who says, hey, AAA crew, long time, first time. I go all the way back to the Droid X days. Oh, Droid. The Droid Ooh. X. Uh, that was a big blocky one. Uh, and like you guys, I'm the one in my family. Oh, I'm the one that my family turns to for tech issues, and I don't mind. I honestly enjoy sharing what I know and would love to share with others across the internet. Isn't there any software you can recommend that would make podcasting or vlogging on YouTube simple? I would also like to connect a microphone for better sound quality. Thanks for all that you do. Um, I was kind of looking around. I was like, well, YouTube, you can record from directly in the YouTube app. But what I couldn't figure out is whether when you're recording in the YouTube app on Android f to be posted to YouTube, whether you can take an external microphone directly into that. And I played around with a couple of the, the microphones that I had at home and I could not get it to work, which is kind of a big fail, I feel like, a big miss for, for YouTube. Mm. So you might have to do a little bit of extra work. In other words, there's an app called Open Camera that's just one of many apps out there, but Open Camera is an open source, uh, really functional, free uh, camera app that does support external microphone recording. So you could use an app like this. It's uh, developed by Mark Harmon, who's uh, created a lot of really great apps. And you could use this to record your stuff, your vlogging, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, plug in an external microphone into the headphone jack. And as long as you you're, might have to play around and find one that works. I saw a bunch of people on YouTube that were pointing to this and, and uh, let it be known that I've never heard of this mic before, but they all seem to think it's great. It's power to wise. And I think the reason they think it's great is because it's sound quality for, for cost. It's only $22. It's a very inexpensive lavalier microphone, but this is the kind that, and, and they even spell out what, what models of devices it works with, but you can plug this right in, have a nice up close on you microphone for, you know, that kind of near sound um, so that you don't get all of that external, you know, road noise or air noise, or whatever, you know, the environment that surrounds you, isolate things. And uh, maybe that'll work. That'll do the trick. That'll get you there. And you won't have to spend much money to do it. That right there is like the mic and the free app. That's like 25 bucks all said and done. And you could be vlogging and probably sound better than a lot of people that post their videos to YouTube. Uh, and then editing for Android. And there's just a number of, I found an Android authority app, um, article that details some of the best video editors and you know you can find in there there's there's a number of them many of them are free adobe premiere clip is one we talked about that's uh, pretty easy to use but there's a number of them on here and i, I don't know but being that we have spent our lives or, or our professional careers um editing video and doing things on like a grant a, a bigger scale on like computers it's hard for me to think that this is the right way to go because I'm just so used to having the the bigger kind of setup and more control. I feel like this would just be really frustrating. What do you guys think? Oh, I'm with you. I can't any sort of media editing or anything on phones. Just try, I, I, it, it breaks my brain. Yeah. Uh, but that said, I mean, but that's the generation gap. I mean, like, you know, uh, totally, if, uh, totally. Where was that? I think it was at the Google event when I was talking with Josh Vergara and Mr. Mobile um, and Michael Fisher. And we were talking about um, and someone else was in the conversation. I forget who. But we we're talking about how the bigger phones are better for. It might have been actually when Juan was on the show. I, I too many people, but um, too many so awesome talking, people talking talking about being able to edit video and stuff on the go and on your phone and mm -hmm. be able to do it. And you're going to an event and you want to quickly edit up that video and put it up on YouTube and and like and now more than ever you can do it because of the processing power of these phones and stuff like that. But conceptually. I need more room to work, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like the fact that I'm having a hard time with the one plus six T of using G board to swipe and the key and the screen is so big that it's picking up the bottom of my thumb and and causing typos. Um, mm -hmm. that that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine what editing would, would be like. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a replacement on the Chromebook either. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, when you bring those Android apps to the Chromebook, it's like, you know, I think I'm going to go to the PC and use like the real stuff. 
Chrome, the real stuff. Chromebook is good for many things, but there are there are a few kind of like those high level. I would say video editing totally falls in that category. You can even you can even edit um, photos on a Chromebook and and have a pretty. You can good edit time. audio on a Chromebook. You can do that okay, yeah. mm -hmm. but again, video yeah. it requires so much more yeah, really uh, resources than a Chromebook or an Android phone could offer. And one of those resources is a giant desktop. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, very tangentially related. First of all, I hope we answered your question, G. Shannon. Let us know how it goes. Um, if any of you have noticed, I am using a iPad. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Twit Ooh. Switch the 2019 way, is on. You didn't talk to us about this. We didn't know you were doing this until, uh, well, I didn't, until I got the newsletter yest I, on Sunday. Me too. In my email. Same, I, same I knew here. You, I knew you wouldn't approve, and uh, uh, I was afraid. Well, we will at least <laughs> offer our support in this trying time. <laughs> That's true. Please help I me. Would. Help me. I would. <laughs> no, I think at this point, Ron's just Ron's just uh, annoyed by it, because this is year three of Twit Switch. It's like, seriously, we got to do this again. I'm just very <laughs> defensive of you, Jason. I want you to be productive and having recently used ios tablets and and was unable to complete the task i had to do i don't know how you're much how you're functional much less using the dock um yeah it's uh it's yeah. a challenge so so this year what megan maroney and i decided to do on tech news weekly we're doing three weeks so it's not a super it's not twice that which is what it was last year and we're not doing phones we're doing basically my uh pixel slate went to megan and her iPad Pro with a keyboard accessory is what I'm using right now. That came to me because the Pixel Slate, I use that like basically 100% of the time for everything that I do. Let's say 95% wow. of the time. I've got it down and I'm really comfortable on that. So like I feel very confident handing that to Megan and saying, be productive because I know it's really easy to do once you get used to how it works. Jumping onto an iPad <laughs> with a keyboard attachment and trying to do everything here is, oh my God, like so far, like I've only spent a couple of days doing this. Uh, and today was the first day where I was like constructing the dock and everything, trying to use the, the Sheets app and everything. And I mean, after four hours, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm so slow. It slows me down considerably. So we'll see how it goes. But my reason for bringing it up was because you were talking, um, you were talking, Flo, about how Chrome OS is good for certain things and not for others and, you know, running Android apps or whatever. Megan was using it earlier and she was asking some questions and she was like, so you know, she had the Gmail Android app running on it. And I saw that. And I was like, oh man, don't do that. Like, that's just going to be a nightmare for you. Use Gmail in the browser. And she's like, well, but it can run these apps. Like, why not use the apps? And it's like Android apps on a Chrome OS uh, device is like the lowest rung of what you do. It's on an Ta as needed <laughs> basis. Yes, exactly. It fills in the gaps when you don't have a better alternative is kind of where uh -huh. that ends up being. So she's having to reprogram her mind out of an app world and into a browser world, which is basically what we do on computers. Um, and I'm having to go from a browser world and go entirely into an app world, but on a tablet sized screen. And so it's almost like we're not comparing apples to apples. Um, and yeah, no, this, this is, is going to be interesting. This is good. This is exactly, I feel like this is the experiment. It's really going to tell us, I think how the pixel slate is going to exist in the world alongside the very famous and popular iPad. I mean, people know Apple was really, told people that they can use, it, it did a really good job teaching people that it could use that product as kind of like a, you know, a makeup machine of your own, like just buy a keyboard and look, it's like a laptop. Yeah, and so horrible. I want to see now the actual effectiveness of the Pixel Slate with somebody who is not 100% on that Google train, Yeah, you know, because for, for us, it's, you know, we already got everything up there in the ecosystem. Yep. We can do it just fine. We can go from device to device. But somebody who's coming from an iPad or from the Apple world, and you know, it's also good to get her perspective, to get Megan's perspective as an Apple user, just so that we know like what Google's doing right or wrong. Because I feel sure. like sometimes I don't really see that because I'm still coming from this, like I use all the stuff anyway. So yeah, it's, it's as good as I need it to be. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree. Uh, I miss the trackpad though. 
<laughs> I mean, I realize this has a keyboard on it, but it doesn't have a trackpad and I use the trackpad all the time and I can be really fast with it because it's like a trackpad combination. I with, love a trackpad too. You know, with, with my left hand doing, you know, tabbing and all this kind of stuff. So I can move really fast and here I'm just like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm anyways, yes, forward. it's that time of year again. Here we I'm are. looking forward. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't run it by you guys. I, I realized I didn't. I didn't. Which is like, you up would have been nice. That's all yeah, I'm saying. I, I, I hear you. It, yeah. I will remember this for next year. I will let it's you know. It's not like we don't talk. You know, it's not like no. we don't have aloe. Come you know, I, I, I messed up. I messed up, you guys. <laughs> no, and okay. I really should have told you. And uh, <laughs> maybe you can talk to Megan about having her come on for a segment because I would love to hear her opinion. Yeah, yeah. we should have her on. Yeah, at all the, right. At the end of the three weeks, she should be a guest yes. on the show. Why not? All right. All right. I, I will, Megan. I will uh, check in with her and see if she's available. Put, and she can putting this out into us. the world. Megan, wherever you are. <laughs> she's going to hear about it on Twitter in like two seconds. You're, yes. you're being paged. You're being paged. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's take a break. Thank the sponsor of this episode. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by WordPress, a brand that you are already so familiar with. Whether you realize it or not, WordPress is everywhere online. Uh, and you know, you can build a website on WordPress. That's the beauty of it. Everybody, it, it's so easy that anybody can do it. What would you do if you could do anything? And that's what you can do with WordPress.com. They're the sky's the limit for you with powerful site building tools, thousands of themes, and 24 7 support from real experts. WordPress.com lets anyone pursue whatever it is that they love by launching a site that's free to start with room to grow. That's the beauty of it. You start. You could start simple, you could start using a template, and then grow it from there. WordPress.com was started so anyone can publish their ideas. No two-week trials, no hidden fees, and WordPress users own their content forever. WordPress.com is built to grow with you, uh, to get you where you want to be tomorrow. They have a wonderful customer support team that's made of actual WordPress experts. Uh, they're standing by to help you 24 hours a day, including weekends. So whenever you have that, that question or that problem, whatever it may be, they're there to help. The WordPress platform is super flexible. It's powerful as well. Uh, so, f so much so that some of the biggest companies on earth use it to build their websites. And millions of people use WordPress.com every day to turn their dreams into reality. And these sites look awesome and they're easy to make. So go to WordPress.com slash all about Android. You'll get 15% off any new plan purchase. That's WordPress.com slash all about Android for 15% off your new website. You'll get started and you'll see why everybody uses WordPress. WordPress.com slash all about Android. And we thank WordPress for their support. And now it is time for hardware. Starting with Ron. Starting with Xiaomi. Starting with Redmi. Uh, so you might have heard Redmi. that <laughs> earlier this month, uh, Xiaomi launched the Redmi uh, which is a sub-brand of Xiaomi, and they announced uh, the Redmi Note 7 as part of that new sub-brand. Very confusing. Uh, so the Redmi Note 7 is running a Snapdragon 660, and it's got 4 gig and 64 gig of storage, um, or a 6 gig of memory and 64 gig of storage option. Um, it's got a 4,000 milliamp battery. Uh, oh, I clicked away. I'm sorry. I clicked away from my notes. It's got a glass back, a cool gradient color scheme. In case you're curious what color scheme it is, it's, it's cool. cool. Um, and now here's the kicker. It's got a rear camera capable of 48 megapixel at a f1.8 aperture along with a 5 megapixel secondary camera. And it's got a 13 megapixel front-facing camera. And you can get this for about $147 or 900, 999 won. Uh, yuan or whatever the Chinese, uh, what Y U A N. Um, so basically, for a hundred under one hundred fifty bucks, you can get a cheap forty eight megapixel camera phone. Wow. I mean, how how is that working? That's a really nice looking phone, especially really for one hundred fifty right? bucks. That's I crazy. like this red. I like this Redmi. This Redmi some brand. Well, I mean, we've known the Redmi uh, name before. I think maybe. Before yeah. it was Xiaomi, Redmi, blah, blah, blah. And now Redmi is going to kind of stand on its own. Is that similar to kind of like 
Oppo and OnePlus, or I don't know. Well, no, but Oppo know. and OnePlus are two separate companies. Like Oppo yeah. is, an, is a strategic investor or, in OnePlus. Oh, but, you know what it would be? It would be kind of like Honor. Like there's Huawei and then there's Honor, which Honor yeah. is a Huawei sub-brand. So yeah. that's kind of what so this is like. The larger question is, how are they getting away with calling this the Note? <laughs> well, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. The Note 7, even. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> wait a minute. Wasn't the Note 7 the one that had all the fire issues? Maybe it was. Yes, yeah, but now was, for yeah. SEO purposes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Note 7 is a couple of years gone at this point. They, they figured it's time to, to jump on it or something. Uh, that's a nice looking phone for 150 bucks. It's really I nice. Say. Uh, apparently, just they're look saving at that. That's it. That's so slick looking. I like it. Uh, apparently, they're saving this reddish tone for a Chinese New Year launch. Oh, okay. Which would. That is bode a, very well in terms of marketing. Yeah. Very, very good marketing. That's hot looking. I like it. Looks really nice. I mean, I wish we had a little more of this in the U.S. Yeah, kind of the. I, I feel like here in the U.S. very often the lower range devices feel and look like lower range devices. Like let's style them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Give, give a little give a little pizzazz. Pizzazz. Nothing, nothing wrong with yeah. that. Nothing wrong. If you're gonna, if you're pizzazz. not gonna put NFC in there, at least make it pizzazzy. <laughs> make it pizzazzy. I like it. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Make it pizzazzy. I, I don't, don't even know how, how to what spell. Source.com will feel about that one. It kind of looks like pizzazzy. It kind of looked like pizza z. I made it up. But uh, pizza z. Well, that sounds delicious. <laughs> sounds like the, that sounds like the hip new pizza place in the mission. You know what else is pizzazzy, Flo? I bet you do. Uh, a, another phone that maybe will be super colorful and exciting. Who knows? Uh, but we do know that the Samsung Galaxy S10, yes, folks, it's uh, barely a month into the new year. We're already high up on this news. It's coming February 20th. Now, it's this particular event is going to take place not in New York City as uh, happened in years past, but at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco. Oh. So it's going to be in good old SF. And there are rumored variants of three types of Galaxy S10s that will be possibly announced, including a fourth with 5G capability to be launched in the spring, which is when I'm assuming every carrier has decided Finally, we'll tell them we have 5G, even though we're probably not going to be ready. Oh, sorry, what? Uh, also, <laughs> Samsung is expected to show off a fully functional version of its foldable phone, rumored to be called the Galaxy F, which I think stands for Florence. Um, so it's the Galaxy Florence. Should, yes. Is what it's called. Yeah, it's the Galaxy named Flow. After me. Uh huh, exactly. Ooh, uh, exactly. Know, yes. Because it flows open and closed. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Flow now. can open and close. Exactly. <laughs> like it. Uh, and not just her mouth. So Samsung also announced that January 28th is when it will show off the new Galaxy M series. And so this is like a mid-range uh, family of phones. And um, Samsung plans to bring the notch, the teardrop-shaped notch, to this device, similar to the one on the OnePlus 6T, this is being teased on Amazon, so it sounds like it's going to be a real hit on the online retailer. It's all also rumored to point to two variants, so not just that one Galaxy M, but two different kinds, uh, one with a 5,000 milliamp battery. So really just wow. kind of, it sounds like Samsung is, uh, what's that word for when you, it's like when you launch a net and you just hope to catch whoever you possibly can. They're throwing in that their net. phones at a wall and seeing what sticks. Exactly. Now this this it's I think important to know that this is definitely a strategy of Samsung past. Remember yeah, when they yeah. were making like phones of all sorts and they had like they had Tizen running phones and Android phones and they had mid range and high range and they had giant phones. Um, you know it's possible since the Chinese market has or rather the Chinese manufacturers have just kind of really grown their mid-range and low-end presence and showing that they can really offer a lot of quality for not so much money. I have a feeling Samsung's feeling like we really want a piece of that market again, not just the high end. So 
I imagine that's what's in store for this year. Hmm. Maybe. And they're also kind of uh, playing playing through on their what they had said as far as like bringing features that you have normally come to expect from premium devices and bring them to their right. mid-tier devices. So you're seeing their first notch phone be one of their mid-tier devices, which for whatever reason, some people say is like a premium device feature. Um, is that, is that, I thought it was something like, oh, I don't know, NFC or wireless charging. <laughs> NFC is, or- is so old. It's so passe. I know, but it's not always in a low end phone. <laughs> yeah, that's or true. Or a mid range phone. Yeah, that's true. And it gets left out. It does out seem still. like what, yeah, one of the things that cut, gets cut first on the low end phones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now, Ron, you have the OnePlus 6T, which has the notch in a very similar fashion, the teardrop, which I personally, as far as the notches look, I actually kind of like the teardrop. What do you think? I, I, I don't mind the teardrop, but I mean, I like the teardrop. I didn't have a problem with the notch on the OnePlus 6. Um, and actually, to be honest with you, I did notice with the with the teardrop notch, I lost the LED light right. telling me when I had a, a text message, which I now now I have to turn I have to you know touch my phone in some way to have it light up to see if I have any texts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, what happened to my little light? But um, but the teardrop notch is fine. I mean, like it's 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 definitely out of the way. I don't notice it as much. Yeah. Um, but again, I didn't have a problem with the main with the main notch. So um, Who am I, I to judge? I gave the OnePlus 6T to my husband uh, to use in Romania because he couldn't use his main phone there. And when he came back, he actually kept it. And because it works with Verizon, he got it all set up and configured and it's working fine. But my cousins who I guess tech runs in our blood because a lot lot of us (laughs) talk about Android. um, My cousins all noticed his phone and were like, what phone is that? That's the one plus six T. You have the teardrop notch. It, it is a global phenomenon, folks. Wow. The teardrop notch is a global phenomenon. It's stylish. Yeah, it is. I, I, yeah, yeah I'm, not surpri- I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. That's a global phenomenon. And then you have Sam- Samsung's uh, upcoming at some point. Have they announced a phone that's going to have the, the hole, hole punch? punch. <laughs> I don't know how that. The hole punch just feels. I mean, let's see how people respond to it, right? Let's see how everybody responds to it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess uh, that remains to be seen. Um, when they were showing it, well, I, I mean, we've seen some phones that have the whole punch, and I think I expected to dislike it a lot more than I actually did when I saw the actual phone with the whole punch on it. But I can't remember the model of the phone. That would be very helpful right now. Sorry, don't have it for you. What I do have is uh, the new Snap- Snapdragon uh, processor, 855. This is Hi. not new news necessarily. Last year they announced it. Uh, every year we get a new flagship Snapdragon uh, processor for the premium Android devices that are to come. And now we're starting to get better insight into the benchmarks around this new processor. And we've learned a few things. Obviously there was some sort of embargo that lifted today because a number of publications from their time at CES had some time with a benchmark device and unlabeled probably never to be released device that was running the 855. They were given some time to run some benchmarks. So do keep in mind that benchmarks do not represent real world usage. Mm -mm. It's just numbers, but it gives you a sense at this early stage of what they have marketed marketed it as and what it's delivering on based on these, these little bits of time that the publications got. So uh, 19 to 45% faster than the Snapdragon 845, according to CNET. The Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm had promised around 45% of, of, uh, you know, speed, uh, improvements in December. So that's good. CNET says the 855 leaves, they say the S9 and the LG V40 quote in the dust, uh, whatever that means, but Hey, that sounds promising. And on tech, uh, says that real world performance Though it is excellent, it doesn't quite reach their expectations. And on tech, I feel like has pretty high expectations. That's a good thing. Uh, Huawei's Kirin 980, which is a, a pretty big powerhouse, still beats the 855. They said in most workloads, but power consumption much lower than the 845. Uh, and overall, the 855 is, they say, extremely well executed. Tom's Guide also said it's narrowing the gap between uh, it and the Apple A12 chip. The A12 chip was 26% ahead uh, on the last Snapdragon device or, or processor. This time, only 2% ahead in multi-core performance. So all these things, like it can kind of seem like a mishmash and a jumble, but ultimately it seems like 
the A55 is delivering, at least in these benchmarks, on some of the promises that they were that they had. XDA confirms a 20% jump in GPU performance, which is another big part of this new processor uh, GPU performance improvements. So, um, yeah. So I guess we'll, uh, you know, remains to be seen what this actually means, but we will get used to hearing A55 as this year progresses because that's just the way it works. Every year we get a new Snapdragon premium uh, system on a chip, and then it ends up being the thing that we uh, you know, find in all of the premium, most of the premium smartphones, maybe save for like Huawei and a few other uh, manufacturers because they do their own. Uh, Samsung also has its own, but it's still uh, expected to have the A55 in the Galaxy S10. I'm going to say, I feel like it's just, we just wait for the Qualcomm processor. It's like, there's no, there's no competition, at least here in the U S for like different processors. So even if you do give me benchmarks for the new Qualcomm, whatever's going to be in the flagships, like it doesn't matter because I don't really have a choice. Right. I, I really don't have a choice besides a Qualcomm chip, especially here in the U S so I'm either going to go for the ultimate high end one, or I'm going to go for maybe a mid range one. And that's kind of it. So cool. So why, um, <laughs> if Samsung has its Exynos processor and, you know, it always seems to release the Galaxy S series uh, in the U.S. with the Snapdragon premium system on chip, and then internationally it'll release it um, in many markets with its own Exynos chip that it creates. Why? Like, I guess I don't understand the reason behind why Samsung doesn't just release all of them with the Exynos chip. There must be some reason. There must be some really good reason why they choose for Snapdragon over there. I always own. wondered that. I yeah. always wondered that, and I could never really get an answer when I would ask. And I have a feeling that it has to do with certification of some sort. Yeah. Maybe Samsung has, it, maybe Samsung has certification overseas more than it does here. Maybe, maybe it is because Qualcomm has the market has here and lot, maybe it's kind of hard to yeah. bring in. That's me putting it nicely. <laughs> right. Well, and, uh, and, and, and Bleak's yeah. in chat uh, saying, which I, you know, I didn't consider it. Um, Bleak says, your radios are freaking whack there. The frequencies. Oh, yeah. Duh, so I probably the radios. <laughs> Thank you for putting it in terms that, that we can all understand, Bleak. Freaking no, it's whack. true. I, I always forget about that. We do have weird <laughs> cellular radios. And yeah, plus we have weird island. things with the carriers. I bet you, I bet you they do something I bet you it's just layers. It's like a burrito. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> don't make me, don't you go making me hungry, Flo. I know. I'm sorry. It's because I started thinking about like black beans and a tortilla. And so oh, oh it's you're doing phone. it. You're doing sorry, it. Sorry. It's, it's a phone burrito. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing exactly what I asked you not to do. You're making me oh, hungry. Oh my God. Phone burrito. Oh, Legendary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Ronnie, you got the email. All right, we got an email. Charles from San, San Antonio, Texas wrote in and says, uh, I have a question about a smartwatch. Wanting to upgrade from a Fitbit Blaze with CES being done. I wanted to know if you had any recommendations within a $300 budget. Uh, thanks for your help. Keep up the great work. Hope everyone had a great new year. Charles, I had a great new year. Thank you. Um, so now the CES is done. I mean, Flo, I feel like you're you're a person on the street with all this sort of with all the, this gear and wearables. Um, if somebody wanted to upgrade a Fitbit Blaze, what direction can they go in for about three hundred dollars? I was just thinking about this as we were coming to it and thinking about how out of touch I am with the Wear OS yeah, platform because I've just been frustratingly not having my needs met. Like I just feel like nobody's making a watch for me. At the same right at the same rate, there are a bunch of watches coming out. And remember the fashion brands are going all in on Wear OS, which is a good thing because that means that you'll be able to choose stylish watches versus like utilitarian ones, which means you'll want to actually like charge that thing at the end of the day and wear it. Uh, so I think one of the ones that's really standing out is, so Fossil, I mean, I have one of their hybrid watches. I have used several of their smart watches and they've been pretty consistent and have worked really well. So the Fossil Sport actually has the Snapdragon Wear 3100 chipset in it. It has NFC, it's in a 41 millimeter case, so it's a tiny bit bigger, but it's available and uh, it's only 255 it's 255 bucks. I shouldn't say only it's 255 bucks, which is 
on the um, it's not on the splurge side, but it's on the just affordable enough side. And because it comes in all these different colors, uh, you can you can kind of buy the one that fits your style. And I mean, Fossil has a great track record. They are watchmakers and now they're making smartwatches. So why the heck not? Yeah, and that's not necessarily a CES announced uh, wearable, just to point out, but that is within your price range. And many, I f feel like in 2018, pointed to this to be one of the better Wear OS uh, wearables out that year. Um, and then as you were talking, uh, mm -hmm. Flo, I was reminded of... And I don't know that this necessarily um, <laughs> would would be a solution for Charles because I think it's more of a more of a ladies' watch than it's a, a gentleman's watch. It's, it's a femme focused. It's a it's a femme focused. There we yes. go. The Kate Spade scallop. This just this just uh, triggered my mind as far as what you were talking about, like a Wear OS watch that actually has some stylings that maybe that's pretty. I would wear th this maybe now. Would like. I'm glad you brought this up to me because this is really pretty. And now I want to go see this at the store. It has scalloped edges around the uh, around the display, which is just nice and frilly. So if you're into that sort of thing um, and it comes in all these really nice colors and with, you know, leather band and it's not much bigger than the other watches. And it also has. Oh, sorry. There there is. Yes, there is NFC on it. Sorry, I'm I'm like scrolling through the letters trying to find all this stuff. Um, and so nobody's really worn it outside of like seeing it at CES, but just from the looks of it, I mean, if this is the road that we're going down this year for Wear OS, I think you're going to see me maybe coming back to it. So check, this is, we're not talking about me here, but now we are. <laughs> check back with me in a few months to see what I get. Uh and as for you, Charles, it looks like there's going to be a lot more stuff out there to choose from. And Fossil is always a good bet. Yeah, Fossil is a good bet. And mm -hmm. uh, and I would say if you're if you're in the market to find a Wear OS device now, make double sure that it has the Snapdragon Wear 3100 chipset. Yeah. That's the new one, long like over or at least a couple of years overdue uh, updated uh, system on chip for these wear watches and you want to make sure that any watch you're getting now has mm -hmm. that. And there, I think there are still some being released that has the old chipset. So be, be aware of that. Uh, I think you're just going to be happier in the long run. If you do that. So. Be aware. Be aware. It's like, <laughs> What is that from? Is that from Lion King? Lion King. Be prepared. Oh. But <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> there we go. All right. It's time for some app news. Flo, you got the first one. So are we still like, I thought we told you all about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I'm being shady. Okay, so Bloomberg posted last week about the discovery that Facebook couldn't be deleted from certain Samsung phones. It can only be disabled on certain devices. Um, but like I said, uh, non removable apps on Android is like nothing new. But the timing of this article is giving converse, new conversation to this or rather re bringing the conversation back to the table which I think is a good thing because we've spent all this time sort of lauding like, ooh, UI changes and all these new features. But then we forgot to mention, oh, by the way, there's a bunch of apps you can't delete. Yeah. Uh, and with kind of the way that Facebook has been in hot water in the last six to eight months, I can also imagine people who want to get rid of Facebook and move on with their life and can't do that on their Samsung phones are, yes, are not very happy about this. So Facebook says that when the app is disabled, the app acts like it has been deleted. And again, this has been reported on, and, and we've said this before, so you're still gonna have that space taken up on your little, you know, your little flash space, hard drive, whatever, on your phone. Uh, but you're not gonna be able to use the app, it's not gonna bother you, but it's still there. And that can be very bothersome for some. So yes, it's not tracking your location data, it's not collecting anything on you. It's not transmitting to Facebook. It's not logging you in. But for some, maybe the sheer fact that it's still there is just too much. And for that, I think we should maybe start an online support group or something. I don't know. I mean, 
It's a sign of the times. It is a sign of the times. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was interesting when I first saw this this article posted and then blowing up, like totally blowing up. It was like, did you hear that Facebook can't be removed from these phones? Yeah, I, like, well, yeah, I told you like 2012. can't be removed from phones. It's called bloatware. And like they've been yeah. doing it for years and the best you can do is disable uh, it. You can't reading. remove it. It just turns out that, you know, that right now is a really bad time for Facebook and people just, it's, a, it's a, it can be a bad word for a lot of people. And so they just don't even want to see it on their screen. And if they do, even if it's disabled, they still think there's something happening in the background. And why wouldn't they think that? <laughs> hey, hey, remember when there, when, when there was a phone with a little blue Facebook icon button on it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I remember that one. Oh, what uh, was that called? Remember the Facebook phone from HTC? Yeah. Oh, these. This I even is forgot the, what it was called. Now, yeah, like, I know, right? I the reviewed HT it. I gotta remember. Now, now I gotta look it up. Now, now we're tangenting, but that's okay. It was HTC, HTC, first. HTC first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was and what was the one with the Facebook button on it though? Um, uh, it was, oh, it was white. It was a white phone. And it had a Facebook um, button on it. I remember this. What is it? I can't find right, it. Right. I didn't make that up, right? I, no. I, the, the, I swear there no. was a phone that had HTC, a... HTC adds a Facebook button to do, to, new, to new Android handsets. Where is it? Uh, so there were HTC. It was at Mobile World Congress status. in 2011. The status. Sta yeah. HTC salsa. status. Oh, no. Yeah. Status. That's what it is. Oh, boy. No. And the salsa. It was the Holy HTC cow, cha, -cha and salsa. Phone. Yeah, like literally, it's like phone, and then down in the the chin, uh, off on an island on its own, is a little Facebook button. Victor, it's in the chat. You can uh, oh, you found it on GSM Marina. There we go. I found the Thank article. You, Victor. On, yeah, there it is. Oh, There's, I remember. Yep. Yes, I remember. Wow, look at that right there, prominently where your thumb can just hit it, and then <laughs> yep. you could take a picture with your five megapixel video recorder and let people know how you're doing. Oh boy, that phone. Just crazy. Look at that. Speaking Speaking of Facebook, I walked into a relative's apartment last weekend and sitting there on their uh, on right next to their TV was a big old Facebook portal. Oh, you saw one in the wild. I saw one in the wild. I saw apparently uh, someone's family bought it, bought it forever because their, their family were spread out in multiple states. And so to stay connected, they all got portals for Christmas. And so they were in, did you say a coffee shop? I'm sorry, I missed that. No, no, an apartment. Like oh, in a, in, okay. yeah, a relative's apartment, just sitting <laughs> I just, next to the TV. I, yeah. And I, I I would actually could see someone doing it, but I just like, I pictured someone in a coffee shop, shop with a Facebook portal. With, with like, thing, Hi, yeah. Mom. How's it going? Hey, you no, never yes. know, like internet cafes. They still have those overseas in a lot of markets. I mean, I've seen pictures of people that take their gaming rigs into cafe into coffee shops. And Free so Wi-Fi. It wouldn't yeah. be out With of purchase. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the realm of possibility. Um, oh, boy. Dedicated Facebook button phone. No, thank you. Go away. Uh, By the way, uh, sorry, very quickly yeah. before we move on. It's just Bleak reminded me. I just want to bring it up to anybody who is annoyed by Facebook on their phone. That's an installer on the Samsung phones. So as long as you don't, like, launch it, it, it's not going to fully install. It's just okay. going to live there perpetually. I can understand why people wouldn't understand that, though. You know what I mean? Like, totally. That's great. That's awesome, uh, but some people aren't going to know that. They're going to see that logo there, and they're going to freak out. They're going to lose their love of minds because of everything. Which is why we're here, to tell you yeah. what the truth is. Yes, and Bleak, to make sure. Thank you, Bleak. Make sure that we don't miss things like that. Uh, I can't wait to see what Bleak pokes a hole in in this next story. Google announced <laughs> Project Strobe last October. You may remember that was in reaction to its Google Plus privacy bug, what has actually grown to be privacy bugs. Uh, now it's sharing reports on how it's doing in its efforts to impose rules and limits on developers to kind of tighten up that security uh, on its services. Google announced that it'll begin to remove apps from the Play Store that violate its permissions rules, they say over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, those include limiting SMS and call log permissions to messaging and dialing apps in order to prevent data leaks. Uh, developers, of course, of apps that use those permissions in other ways uh, are not very happy because, you know, they aren't necessarily always just doing that to slurp up data. They might actually be, you know, cultivating the the Android goodness that we've all come to know about Android where, oh, here's a, here's a developer that came up with a unique way to use that permission, but in something that solves a problem that I have. Uh, if it sits outside of messaging and dialer, in other words, Google's saying, 
eh, it's not going to cut it anymore unless you appeal. So developers um, will be contacted by Google and they have 90 days to comply uh, to make those changes or request an exemption. Then they would have to describe what that exemption is. And if that does not work, then I mean, they could be rejected, and uh, many developers have been so far. March 9th is the deadline for this compliance, uh, and yeah, Google apparently has been also uh, expanding its list of use cases based on developer feedback. So, glimmer of hope, I suppose, but I mean, Google tightening ship, and I know that it's making developers upset, developers who are using these things in different ways and not being shady about it, but it's a it's kind of a, a tightrope to walk across, right? Like I can understand why Google would want to tighten things down. So I, I don't know, in some ways I feel I, like Google's doing the right thing here. That, I totally agree that if it's violating the, the rules, then it's got to be removed. And then the developer has to deal with it. Neither talk to Google and explain why it's violating and see if they have to adjust the rules or fix the app so it doesn't violate. Like the rules are the rules. Like this is, we need that because if you don't have that, you you get malicious apps, especially with the wave of malicious apps we saw in Q4. Um, Google's got to clamp down on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm, hey, and at least yeah. they're moving fast. That's true. Yeah, they're not messing around. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I know that's not going to make some people happy because people like, is uh, many power users want to have absolute control and you know so they're yeah. i you know saw some people like well i'm saving the apks of the old versions so that they don't get okay. taken from my phone that's fine. Like, yes. but i'm on a you go, drive. go for that. it but i can cool. understand why google would want to clamp down on this and i think overall it's probably for the best and if it really is a use case that's above and beyond it's like oh well i hadn't really thought of that before and they make that case maybe they create an api that serves that in a responsible way and you know, that doesn't solve the problem right now but hopefully that's what happens Hey, if there's one thing we've learned is that sticking with Android has been an absolute payoff all these years. It's that things, you know, it gets updates and it's being constantly iterated on. And uh, and I, as a user, I appreciate that because mm. I I kind of toe the line of casual and enthusiast user, right? Right. So I, I would like to be I would like to be serviced in both both realms, not just as an enthusiast, but also as a person who wants my life to be easier mm -hmm. and not have my data leaked. Please. Yeah, it's fair. Please. It's fair. <laughs> Please not that. All right, Ron, you got the last one. All right. The, the one thing that the world needs is another cloud gaming service, but that's not going to stop Verizon. <laughs> um, Verizon is testing a new cloud gaming service called, you know, wait for it. Wait for this. The marketing and branding wizards that came up with this one. Verizon Gaming. Whoa, 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 wow. Huh? What? Oh, Verizon VCG. Gaming? VCG, <laughs> everybody. V VCG. Um, you can see that on a t-shirt. I'm going to get a tattoo of VCG because yeah. I'm a Verizon gamer. Um, so anyway, so they're testing this new cloud platform service on Android on the down low. So keep that in mind. Um, it's currently running on the NVIDIA Shield, and it's um, soon to be on Android as well, Android oh. 2. Um uh, you can use a paired Xbox One controller if you want. Um, and they've got 135 plus games currently shown in screenshots, including Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, Battlefield 5, Destiny 2, and many other great games. Fortnite, everyone's favorite Fortnite. Um, the current test is focused on performance and later will be focused on securing top titles. And you got to wonder if this is going to be their big selling point for 5G. You know, high speed, low latency, low latency, good for you know big games yeah, like Red Dead Redemption. Um, would Verizon choose to zero rate this kind of data usage? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it begs the question: Would this fare better than Verizon's failed streaming video service, Go90? Oh, remember um, Go90? And I gotta imagine, I got the bar is pretty low to do better than Go90. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, there, and there's a lot to there's a lot to be gained from creating a streaming gaming service that actually works. Like if if 5G is the way to make this a mobile game streaming solution that works the way gamers would hope would want, you know, that low latency, high speed, then maybe Verizon is is uh, you know ripe with ripe to create a winner here. But I mean, who yeah. knows? But it's being tested now, so. I guess if you're on Verizon, it applies to I mean, you. And if you're not, 
You're yeah, that's luck. the thing. Is that, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I guess if you are, I mean, if you, uh, this goes back, this is the Amazon approach, right? If you are, a, if you're on a, have a Verizon mobile phone, if you have Verizon Fios at home and you're watching, you know, your cable TV through Verizon Fios and you're into gaming, it would make sense to just use Verizon's gaming. Cool. I, I can totally use this. And it, and the, it seems like if they're currently focusing on performance and then going towards top tier games and they already have Red Dead Redemption and God of War and Fortnite, which are some of the best games already. Like, so maybe they're, maybe they're taking the right approach. Um, I'm not a gamer, so I'm not looking for a cloud gaming service. Um, but, uh, I, it, it makes sense in terms of a, this makes more sense than go 90 yeah. in terms to have in their suite of, uh, suite yeah. of uh, options. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, maybe, maybe I'll try it out as a Verizon user. Although I would just appreciate having the ability to make phone calls in my house. Yeah. Yeah. And if they install this app on your phone and all you can do is disable it, then what? Mm. Mm. Well, yeah. that's why I buy my phones unlocked. Oh, I'm see. not. I don't buy them from Verizon. I don't want any of that stuff. That's true. Good point. <laughs> Sorry, big red. You smart. Not uh, interested. And now, boom, 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 yes. boom. It's time, time, time for the arena, arena. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android arena. <laughs> Twit.to slash AAA poll 402 is where you went to vote. And if you did, you did not see the results at the end of your voting because <laughs> I did not switch that on. And I'm sorry. But, uh, Victor, you have the link. Excellent. So oh, wow. we have the results. This is the first app arena of the year. And, Ron, you, you went with the uh, with the retro pick and your gamble paid shocked. off. Yeah. Let yeah. Me I am shocked. Because I thought Mr. Success was going to be a success. <laughs> oh, boy. Mr. Success wow. was not a success at Aww. all. Lemmings wins uh, with a lot of the vote. I guess it doesn't give us percentages on this. Uh, around 40%. History here, second place. Chess.com, third place. Crossover for Chrome OS Beta, fourth place. And Mr. Success, not a success at all. It was so uh, like 12%. That so while we didn't, it's the first arena of the year. So everything's, we're back at scratch now. Yeah. So I'm not going to do the points. Actually, Victor, can I get the, can you put the graph back up again? I'm sorry. I'm not going to do the points. We'll let Wade County do that next week. But currently I am in first. Uh, the guests are in second and uh, Flo is in third and Jason is in fourth. So that's your standings okay. after one week. When there's two All guests right. on one episode. It throws everything off. Yeah, it which definitely skewed. Bit. Yes, we did figure that out. We did. We did that. That was in all the various, um, you know, uh, different versions permutations. and, and <laughs> permutations. We did figure out what happens when there's two guests. Um, but either way, the guests are in second place. So there you go. Because yeah. I won. Ha. There you go. Ha ha. Whatever. <laughs> all right. So That's you win. I go last. I go last, right? Uh, you go last. Yeah. But although I'm on an iPad, so I can't rearrange the uh, order of these uh, <laughs> rows. So we're just going to have to leave let's, them the way it is. I'll go first. go with it. This is a quick app, and I'm not sure. Well, I'm not, okay. So let's, let's just say I had, to, I had to take a trip, and I had to go to the DMV last week. Oh. Isn't that fun? You. Isn't that so much fun sitting in the DMV <laughs> waiting, feeling so like fun. at any moment you could you know, like get you know like get jer like get sick. I, I always feel like when I go to the DMV, like is everyone around me like sneezing? Because I feel like they're sneezing and like I'm gonna walk out of there with a cold. Anyways, uh, went to the DMV. I was there for about half an hour, and I they actually flashed this like ad for an app up, and I just I like the cause, so I'm showing that off today. It's actually an app made by GM, and it's called Call Me Out. This is an app that is designed to, to help keep you from touching your phone while you're driving. It's very much one of those apps that's like a single kind of uh, purpose, uh, but I kind of like what they're doing here. So. Basically, what you do is you use the app to record. You can either record yourself like I did down here. Oh. Just put the phone down. Stop it. What are you doing? I don't know if you can hear that. It's really quiet for whatever reason. Um, but I you know, recorded a, a bit of audio that's like, put the phone down. Stop. Don't do that. Put your phone down. And you could record a number of these with uh, people that you know. So you get your friends, get your family, 
whoever uh, get uh, you know if you can talk a celebrity into recording one for you sure have at it um, but you can stock it up in here and load a bunch of these voice recordings in and so then when you're actually driving over five miles per hour your android phone will automatically detect that you are and it will activate this app in the background so if you then touch your phone it's going to play this audio for you and tell you to, to, to put your phone down in one of the many voices that has been recorded. And then there's a social component, too. Uh, I did not touch my phone, so I cannot show off the social component. See, I don't touch my phone when I'm driving anymore. But if I had, it would show me uh, my stats compared to a bunch of other people, or I could actually create a group. So if I had, like, my friends and my family in on this also, and we've all recorded our audio bits for everyone else, then we can track each other's progress over time. And we can see that, ah, dad, quit touching your phone. I know that you did it because the app showed that to me and I don't approve. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of a, a neat way to kind of go about it. Right now, my rank is 11,936 out of 11,938. Um, I, don't ask me what that means. I don't. I haven't touched my phone, so I don't know if that's good or bad. But anyways, you would want to compare yourself against the people you know anyways. Uh, so it's called Call Me Out. It's a single-purpose app, and uh, it's kind of goofy, but I, I like it. I think it's a kind of an interesting way to keep, prevent you from touching your phone. It also has like a full-screen takeover if you actually end up interacting with your phone while you're driving. And there is a button that you can press uh, if you really want to, if you happen to be a passenger, let's say, you can press that button and it won't count against your leaderboard. But uh, call me out, made by GM, and I think it's kind of neat. So check it out. All right. I just, I, sorry. What's I just, up? The, the reviews on this are people complaining <laughs> about, why do you need this app? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Maybe, if, maybe you yeah, don't need okay. this app. Maybe I mean, you don't need no, this no, app. No, 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 no. I didn't, and I didn't mean to say that to skew for you, I just, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I brought it up. I just brought it up to say that sometimes the comments for the Google Play Store are not yeah. indicative of the app and what good it could possibly serve. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, that. no, I, I understand what you mean. Some people will go on there and complain because, well, I don't touch my app. Why do I need this app? One star. Like, no, no, like, no, no, well, no, no. Not everybody has, has your, you know, follow through, I guess, or I don't know. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> call me out. Check it out. All right. So Flo, you're up next and I have it installed. Uh, do you have any, do you have anything purchased? Um, I don't have anything purchased. You know, actually funny story. This, uh, I had already set up an account on this a couple of years ago via Facebook and I don't have my Facebook account anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't log in with my account. Uh, but anyways, they have samples on here, so I can show this. Oh, off. perfect. So uh, my pick today, so uh, I can, I've kind of, I'm not really interested in the Kindle ecosystem. I don't have books there. A lot of the books I have are through the Google Play bookstore. And, but I found that some of the books that I want to read are not always immediately available. And because I just don't want to deal with Amazon, I decided to Finally, okay, let's go see what else I can find out there. And so I remembered that Kobo is, you know, an ebook provider. I'm, I'm shocked they're they, still around, to be honest. Well, they're, so from what I understand, they're pretty big overseas because I see yeah. advertisements for Kobo, like, in front of, yes, there's still bookstores overseas. They're, they're, um, based, in, they're, based, in, they're based out of Canada. I remember that. Yep. So yeah. the nice thing about Kobo is that I've been able to find titles um, that I haven't been able to find on Google Play. It also has a uh, audiobook, so if you like to listen instead of uh, perusing through text, you can do that. And the cool thing about Kobo books is that you actually rack up points, and so as you are like buying things, you're racking up points to help you like uh, get free content, so you can get like credit towards you know an ebook or whatever, you know, uh, and if you sign up for like a subscription through, the, uh, the, for the audiobooks or for the ebook, they give you discounts and things of the sort. I also like the fact that they offer a lot of different options for viewing. Uh, and of course, since it's all cloud-based, everything is synced in the sky for you. So you can pick up where you left off, no matter the device that you're on. Uh, it's, it's just another alternative to using Amazon. 
it has a social component on it too. So if you are, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and you're sharing books for whatever reason, you can do it from this app. You can read books in different languages. So you can read in English, French, Spanish, Italian, German, Dutch, Portuguese, Brazilian, Portuguese, or Japanese. Uh, I found that reading books in other languages is what helps me learn them. So I like that I can do that through, I can read Spanish books to help me keep up on my Spanish through Kobo. And I just just kind of wanted to bring it to the arena as another alternative to Kindle. So if you're looking for something besides the Kindle, besides the Google Play bookstore, and maybe there is a book out there, I found that if Google Play doesn't carry it and Amazon does, Kobo will usually carry it too. So if it's something that Amazon carries, you will likely find it on Kobo. Um, and for that reason alone is why I decided to use this instead. So it's the Kobo app. It's an ebook nice. provider. Put on curl. Buy some Ooh, ebooks. That's nice. Curl. Yeah, it's, you know, they and they are constantly updating the app. In fact, the last time they updated it was January 11th. Um, they update it with all the Android updates as well. Uh, they will fix issues. If you have, you know, anything to say about it, you can leave a review and they will help you out. And so it was just kind of, I just wanted to find something that was not Amazon. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> yeah. Not Amazon and not Google. So. Awesome. So that is, is it Rakuten? R Rakuten. I think it's Rakuten. And also just worth Rakuten noting Kobo. that this, this brand, um, I haven't actually looked into it, so I'm purely speaking anecdotal here, but I've seen it pop up on like Korean drama apps, Japanese <laughs> content apps. So I think they're an international company that I'm assuming is like buying up these things. And so they're like an international content company. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I feel like I've bought... Raku Rakuten oh, yeah, is a ja ja Japanese electronic commerce and internet company based in Tokyo. Yes. So it's B so it's B to B it's it's B to B to C e commerce. Yeah. B2B so there you go. So <laughs> that might explain yeah. why they have all the international stuff too, which I like. Nice. So. Yeah. Called Kobo Books. They uh, bought a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're, they they have Rocket seventy 10. businesses seventy businesses including online shopping, banking, credit card payments, media, travel, professional sports, video on demand, marketing and data analysis, e reading, book distribution, fashion, and mobile messaging. Oh, wow. man! Go rack a ten. And they're part of Ebates, by the way, in case oh. that means anything to anyone. Okay. Yeah, they acquired Ebates in in 2014. My mother uses Ebates. Ugh. They bought Viber. <laughs> Viber me. Oh, okay. Remember Viber? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. I didn't know they bought Kobo. That's, there's no wonder that's... Yeah. All right. Cool. Good for cool. them. Kobo Books. <laughs> All right, Ron, I got your app installed as well. So yeah. So you, you might have heard earlier in the show, I was talking about how I'm on the OnePlus uh, 6T and it's a big phone. And big phones are cool because I can do a lot more stuff. And I love the the big, uh, I'm taking like 19 by 9 aspect ratio photos or whatever the crazy long photos are. Um, but uh, even, you know, I don't have Jason Howell hands, but I've got pretty big hands. But even my hands, it, well, if Victor, can you go back to me before you go back to, to Jason? For even me using the phone as I try to figure, as I try to figure out the camera, it is hard to get my thumb all the way up to the top to swipe down the, the notification pane. And so when I saw this app, uh, I was like, oh, hey, here's a good solution for those of us with big phones. It is called bottom quick settings. And what it basically does is it gives you a little pane that you can swipe up from the bottom, uh, much like an iOS phone, oh. uh, to access your notifications to, to your, your uh, that, that same uh, notification pane that you get from the top of the phone. So yeah, so when you swipe up, um, you got it when you install the app, you got to do all the permissions and the overwriting and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you go, yeah, if you swipe up, you get the substitute. So you hit this dismiss to get rid of that, Jason, on the blue bar. There you go, a little message. There you go. So when you swipe up just gently, you get that, uh, that little mini bar, and then you swipe up very longly or whatever the correct word there, <laughs> you get the full access to it. And um, in addition to this, you can customize the icons, you can customize the layout of this, you can customize the sliders. So in addition to brightness, you can, um, if you go uh, swipe up, there you go. Uh, go. Well, go to swipe down, 
so you're on the app itself. So when you open up the app, there's a big button along the top that lets you turn the service on and off. So turning, sliding that little action button turns the service off, so it doesn't work if instead now now it's working on. Um, so if you hit the tiles button, you can specify what tiles will be uh, available. Um, you do have to uh, uh, pay for the app to uh, unlock uh, access to the tiles, but uh, that way you can you know if you never use airplane mode, get rid of that that. If you always you know want to use night mode, you can add that tile. Um, all the different uh, you know tons and tons of d uh, different tiles are available um so if you uh unlock the app you can get that and i believe it's not that much money you should uh you should support your devs it is two dollars and 49 cents to unlock that so but if you go to um it, you do a little donations there but if you go to sliders uh that is not unlocked or that is not locked um so you can add media volume alarm volume ringer volume notification volume Access to those things sometimes can be arcane on our phones these days, uh, so it's nice to be able to access all of them um, or none of them or whichever ones you want. Um, it's just totally customizable and lets you swipe up from the bottom. That's all it is. So uh, bottom quick settings, free in the Google Play Store, $2.49 in-app purchase to unlock customizations like colors um, as well as tile uh, organization, things like that. You can change the uh, the uh, the design of the handle, the little the little dot that shows that it's available. Um, you can do that, or if you go back, you can change the theme of this to a light theme or a dark theme. We last, you know, last week we talked about how popular dark themes were. If you hit the hamburger menu, uh, there, Jason, um, app theme under general, first one, you can change it to dark or black. So yeah, so, um, none more black, none more black, it's than the that. same as dark. Yeah, there yep. it is. Um, but yeah, so, uh, bottom quick settings is pretty neat, nifty little app for your big old phone with your small hands. Or big hands, or whatever you want to. If you're, you can't bend your thumb all the way up. So there you go. Nice. Uh, uh, awesome. Bottom quick settings. Free the Google Play Store. Free and uh, two forty nine to upgrade to yeah. the premium features: customized tiles, customized colors, remove the ads, and a music notification panel. Yeah. Very nice. Bottom quick settings. All right. Time for you to place your vote. Is it? Uh, is your favorite app? Call me out. Is it bottom quick settings or Kobo Books? Twit.to slash AAA poll 403 is where you want to go. Uh, tap there and you will go directly to the poll. I think I set it up appropriately yes, now yeah. to where you'll see the results as they are done. Victor is is swinging around with the. Oh, all right. He needs oh, yeah. selected Victor, bottom. Victor wants utilitarian settings. help. Going with the winner. Don't we all? Uh, <laughs> it appears that it's hard to see because the logo is blocking it. There we go. Call me out with one vote. Bottom quick settings with two votes. Kobo Books has yet to get a vote, but it will. Don't worry. It will. Uh, and we will check in on that next week and see who is the winner and then add that to this week's total. And, I mean, we're off to the races. This year's arena is in full swing at this point. And I'm listen, trying to listen. not phone it in this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kobo Books is a great way to start, Flo. Uh, <laughs> oh. I have use of it. I'm oh. teasing. I'm teasing. What I use. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I'm nervous as winning the first arena of the year because it's a, it's a, it's a very long year. Yes. And uh, just because just you win early on doesn't mean you're going to win at the end. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You never know yep. what's going to happen. Uh, a lot of fun, you guys. We've got some good title yeah. suggestions. We had some laughs. We shared some tears. We uh, we we bared our souls uh, <laughs> to to you, and uh, you know so much more about us at the end of this episode. Yes, it's been one of those episodes, and we thank you for joining us. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about, Flo. Uh, what's up? What's what's new in your world? Uh, right now I'm just kind of coming up with a bunch of ideas in this post CES world, right? And it's been kind of quiet on the internet this week. Yeah. So, uh, until people get back to their desks, just visit me at florenceion.com. Visit, uh, visit for the flow feed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Visit the flow feed. I think I'm going to update this week with some random musings. And look, I came up with my own CES banner, even though I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> See you. <laughs> CES 2019, but from home. But from home. <laughs> that's that's the better way to do it, I think. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Uh, thank you, Flo. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Ron, what about you? Well, we didn't run long, so I'm not going to mind because I've got a lot of things to talk about in okay. this little promo section. So first okay. off... Go 
First off, go to finalepodcast.com. Uh, that's my other podcast. Uh, we've moved to a bi-weekly schedule uh, because 2019 is going to be fun and challenging. And so we want to make sure we're still going to be doing episodes, me and Carrie, uh, but every two weeks. And uh, today we released episode 16, The Sopranos, oh. uh, one of the greatest finales of all time. So yeah. you don't want to listen to that. It's time. But I'm super – finale is great, so go subscribe to that. Thank you, everybody. But I'm super excited because last year I, I hinted and I talked about I was working on a project and I mentioned it a couple of times. Well, uh, last Friday – we actually unveiled uh, the project to the world. Uh, it was kind of a pre-launch, uh, but I, I would uh, more than anything want to share with the audience here about a new project I'm working on. It's something called Scorbit, and uh, you can go to scorbit.io. And uh, those those of you who follow me know that I love playing pinball, and if you follow me on Instagram, you see pictures of pinball machines and things like that. Well, for the past couple of years, uh, me and some friends from the Bay Area have been working on this project, and it's basically – uh, it's going. To, it's a device that goes inside pinball machines uh, and connects them to the internet. Uh, and in doing that, we can do cool things like you can upload your scores to an app, and uh, we have an API where we'll be able to do visualizations, and people who own pinball machines can remotely manage the machines and, and things like that. So um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I've been working on it, I think, since 2015. Yeah, I've been that's working on this for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, wow. so um yeah, so we, we, we designed some custom hardware um, running a uh, – it's a neat little box that fits inside the pinball machine, and it's got Wi-Fi and 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 connectors and and uh, all these amazing ports and everything like that. Um, actually, Victor, if you uh, go back to the website and click on our first public update, there's a picture of the, the board. Uh, the device itself is called the Scorbitron. There it is. If you scroll down, there's a little photo of, of – that's uh, that's a little close up of the of the board uh, that we designed and are working on manufacturing now. So uh, yeah, I've got a hardware startup, everyone. Dude, that is amazing, and I am so proud of you, Ron. <laughs> Me too. Because this is this has been the long the a long game for you, right? Like the it, last it three years, you've been working on this. You had the idea. I I remember very early on when you were telling me about it, and I was like, wow, like, and even at that point, I was like, wow, Ron's smart. Like, how do you even? How do you come up with this and then and then make it happen? And you've made it happen. That is well, amazing. Well, well, I, I mean, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the uh, the compliment. Uh, I can't take all the credit. I of have two amazing not. two amazing co-founders, uh, Brian O'Neill, who is uh, works at Slack. Uh, used to work at Eventbrite, uh, worked at Dig. That's where I met him. Um, and he's actually a top 100 pinball player. So he's an amazing player. And uh, Jay Adelson, who is uh, the former CEO of Dig um, back in the day. If you remember Jay back in the day, the, the one of the uh, co-founders of Revision 3 and all that stuff. Um, so the three of us have been working on this. And uh, I, I dreamt up the idea initially because I just wanted a way to keep track of my scores on pinball machines. And both Jay and Brian came in and added the magic. And, and we've been collaborating on this. And we've got some amazing – we've got a bunch of developers from around the world working on it. We've got some amazing hardware folks that have been working with us on it. Um, it's been very educational. Um, it's crazy because you're trying to get technology that was created in the 70s, 80s, and 90s to work mm -hmm. today. Um, yeah. And so, you know, like, okay, yeah, so what's really, what's super exciting is that like a pinball machine, like we all know that we grew up with like the animation and the screen and everything. That was the first thing we got working, but we also got what's called solid state machines, which are the machines from the seventies, which are literally just solid state electronics. Um, we're able to convert that, the, the score data into data that we can then suck up and, and load up to our API and actually keep track of those scores. Um, and if you know anything about electronics, that's not easy. No way, uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, well, it's, been, a, it's been a trip. And so. just, just out of total curiosity, uh, even though this has nothing to do with Android, but still, I'm so proud of you. Uh, <laughs> that is awesome. On those old machines, like, do you have to explicitly test, like, you probably have to seek out all of these pinball machines in order to test and make sure how each unique machine works with this? Is that right? Yeah, well, uh, to, to a certain degree, um, uh, like, like phones and like most hardware, even dating back to the 70s, um, pinball machines are all running off of a operating system. Oh, okay. um, so, right. so, so what, so yeah, so what happens is a lot of pinball machines have a, have a ROM chip in them and pinball machines that were created, you know, from 1978 to 1980 have this version of the ROM chip and from 81 to 83 has this version of the ROM chip all the way up. And then when you get to the more, you know, to the electronics, to, to what we call DMD, the, uh, the digital 
um, uh, digital machine display or whatever the DMD stands for, uh, the the animation ones, those are running, you know, like real CPU processors that we can tap into and work with and all that sort of stuff. So it's still computing. It's still the same kind of technology, but it's written completely from scratch, not in any program, you know, right. programming language that we know or anything like that. Um, you know, I can't divulge how we're doing what we're doing because of course. It's, it's actually we actually file for a patent. Which is pretty cool. Pretty um, so currently, so currently right now it's patent pending, um, which is kind of awesome. Um, the patent has got it's been about a year and a half of that process, and the patent seems to be going well. Um, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it's crazy, and we are. Uh, so the announcement was just that we exist. Uh, we we sponsored a uh, we were co-sponsor of a tournament in Southern California last weekend um, where we had eight prototypes working and the tournament sending you know sending scores to the scorekeeping software as well as also to the live stream on Twitch so people could see like what the scores of the play of the players were in real time. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and so we kind of announced that we existed. And if you go to scorebit.io, you can read the whole email where we announce it. And in there, there's a link to sign up for our beta program. And our beta program is where we're figuring out, okay, who's going to get these the first wave of our devices? And we've got to do a lot of field testing. But we're also um, uh, developing, you know, uh, player apps. So the idea is that I'm a pinball player and I can go to an arcade and I can log into that machine and, and save my score and all that sort of stuff. So you know. I'm very passionate about shipping on both platforms at the same time. Um, <laughs> um, and if anything, I'm, we're looking more into like progressive web apps and things like that versus actually, um, you know, native apps and having all those fun conversations. So, um, yeah, so it's been cool. And I, I created, directed the logo, which I'm very proud I of. I love the logo. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I love the name too. Scorbit is a great name. I'm so yeah. I'm so stoked for you, man. That is amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We're excited. I'm excited. So it it's be. fun thing. Fi finally paid off. Good way to start off the new year. Yeah, no and uh, and uh, needless to say, I picked the worst time to launch a startup. But there it is. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> that's just how it goes. You got I, this, I've been, Ron. I've been saying this. it a lot. How do you make God laugh? Make a plan. So th there <laughs> <Yep>. it is. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, so, yeah. So I know it's not Android related, but it is tech related and, you know, and it is technology and it will reach an uh, Android at some point. So uh, stay tuned. So follow along. Oh, I can't wait. I'm yeah. so happy. Thank you, Ron. That's amazing. Congratulations. Um, I'm just a Jason Howell.net. Oh, That's all you I got. You in the time that we've done this podcast, you put out like what three albums? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's okay. No, How many no, successful this... Kickstarters have you done? Come on, man. I don't even know. I don't even. Know. Uh, no, I do too. Uh, but that's it for this uh, this episode. Hey, if you are not following us, and by us I mean the entire network on Twitter or Instagram, you can do a search for Twit. We are all over, and you know a lot of the shows that we do, uh, some behind the scenes stuff. You can find all that stuff stuff on those feeds so check for that as for this show we are done and out of here i think on time which is never happens Early. uh voicemails can be left at 347 show aaa send us emails at triple a at twit.tv you can find this show on Twitter at Android Show. You can find all of the apps that we've ever uh, reviewed in the arena at our arena apps list, twit.to slash Android apps. And we thank the folks who keep that updated. Really appreciate your hard work. Uh, show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. Go there. You'll find everything you need to know as far as uh, all of our episodes, subscribing to the podcast in, in audio and video form, an embedded player, uh, details, show notes, everything's there. All of the links to the apps from each episode. Yeah, we, we, we jam it full of information for you to we encourage jam. you to check it out. Uh, and finally, you can catch us live uh, on the stream every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. <laughs>